so we showed up today at Leadfoot. Let's see if we can find Finney in his office or if he's even here today. Hey guys, Paul with CP Attic here in Monroe, Georgia at, as you can see, Leadfoot Diesel with Vinnie Himes uh, in his 97 F-250 that has quite a, a bit of work done to it. Uh, he was kind enough to bring his truck actually to work today. He normally keeps it at home uh, and kind of is going to give us a little bit of rundown on it. Obviously, you and I have known each other for probably eight or so years. Facebook years forever, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, we've been to a couple of different of the uh, yep, diesel, diesel trips and things like that. So I've known that you've liked OBSs for a while now, right. just kind of like we do. And I happen to be coming through the area. So, you know, what better opportunity than to hook up? Oh, know, this is great. And, and talk trucks. And so. the truck's got your parts on it, too. So <laughs> it's got your headlights. I actually have your taillights sitting behind the seat that I haven't installed yet. But uh, Shame, shame. <laughs> <laughs> life, life gets in the way That's sometimes. right. So, obviously, you've been an OBS fan for a while. You and I have talked about it quite extensively as to, you know, you're, you're originally from Montana, not even from Georgia. Right. And you had an OBS way back when. And yeah, you, I got, you know. I got the OBS bug when I was 11 years old. Uh, worked on a farm, big ranch out there, 16,000 acre cattle ranch. And uh, I started working there at eight years old. We had a little clapped out. Classic model, and it kind of gave up. And, uh, the old guy that owned the ranch, he went and bought a brand spanking new '94, the first year of the Power Stroke, and showed up on the farm with it. Beautiful black truck, and I was pretty much in love. Back then, you were like, ah, oh. yeah. Is I knew I would own one someday. I, I think, and that's the way most everybody that we deal with, or or anytime I go to a show, they're like. My dad had one, or the neighbor had one, or my grandfather bought one brand new. And I was talking with somebody yesterday, you know, the Cummins is a popular truck. And the Cummins was out way before the Power Stroke was, because they had the IDI and the 6973 and whatnot. But the Power Stroke was the only true crew cab you could get with a solid front axle. Yep. And it had more power than the, than the 6.5, or at least it felt like it did anyway. Right. And then, you know, Cummins, you couldn't get a crew cab in, you could barely get an extended cab in them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, these trucks to me are like the iconic of diesel industry of where like all the roots came from. No matter if it's a brand new 6.7 Power Stroke, Cummins, no, new 6.6 Duramax, I feel like they come from here because this is where people started buying them. This from. is what everybody else was competing with. And this is what ultimately GM and Dodge spent years trying to catch up to the market that these guys were killing in the early 90s. So it's crazy to think about it that way, but it's true, you know, to be able to get a full-size diesel truck, especially with a manual transmission, I mean, this was all you had. This was your only option. This, this, this was it. And, I mean, Ford being Ford, selling what they sold, and, you know, they had decent marketing on it, but being that they were Ford, they were just, they were selling. And they're mass-producing them like they always have. Well, and, and, and whoever actually came up with this design and had these body lines in it, I feel is very iconic and kind of kind of timeless, if you will. He had to be like a Sam Elliott looking son of a gun. I mean, <laughs> right. there's only so many humans on the planet that are that cool. So right. Well, I mean, when when you get down to it, this has become a lifestyle for people. That's right. I talked with a guy yesterday. He stopped me at uh, stopped me at a gas station. He had sold his brand new six seven and had cash in his hand to go buy any truck he wanted to buy. He chose no BS. Real similar to this, it was single cab, long bed, 350, uh, two-tone, blue, blue, and blue. And he said, I had you know 24s on my other truck and 35s and everything was color matched and it was a beautiful truck. He said, this truck's pretty much bone stock still other than a mild lift on it. So I roll into a gas station or the mall or a convenience store or whatever oh, and yes. I'm swarmed with people in, in, you know, that, are, that are interested in this truck. Driving an OBS around is like driving around with a movie star in your back pocket. I mean, it's you can't go anywhere. I mean, you pull up at a gas station and people are throwing cash at you. And it just, for me, it's 
there's so many good childhood memories that I spent in OBS. I mean, my best friend's dad took us elk hunting every year in a four-door crew cab long bed, 96 model. I mean, they're just, you know, you can't ever replicate that windows down, you know, vent visor pointed at your face, cooling your nuts off. I mean, you can't I exactly. replicate that. So my best friend's mom had a crew cab OBS two-wheel drive and his stepdad had a single cab welding truck and that's kind of where I guess where it all goes back to where mine started from was was from there and then my parents bought one brand new in 97 that my brother still owns to this day and is still considered a daily driver if you will and they put we put every single mile that trucks ever had on it but like you said it's kind of the movie star yeah. thing you you're kind of mugged when you go to a gas station and you know people wanting to buy it this that and the other and I was having a conversation with somebody yesterday, and you get a lot of different trucks that are cool and people like them, but you don't get to such a wide range. What's crazy is like a 14 year old that's in high school likes these trucks. Yeah. Grandpa that's 75 likes this truck. Like it's, you know, usually you get that age gap that a certain age fits a truck, you know. 25 to 35 fits a truck, 35 to 45 or whatever. Right. You don't get the whole wide demographic, demographic yeah. of it. So you get, you know, and, and I think you and I talk at least three or four times a week on different OBS stuff. Yeah. Just, you know, because we have that connection that goes all the way back to these. Even if we're not in one of these at the moment or even looking at one or even driving it, we still have, you know, a connection to these trucks and, you know, and you build internet friends if that's you will right. you know yeah so no it's great i mean it's that's what this truck has always been to me is just something that i i've always wanted uh, the crazy thing is is when i got this truck because you know he could have told me ten thousand dollars i'd have paid it you know, it, fit my it fit exactly what i wanted and a lot of guys are like why didn't you get the four door well i don't want a four door <laughs> this is the truck i wanted and so yep. this is the one i got and we were sitting talking in your office earlier uh, because you're pretty much the head nacho here at, at Leadfoot. Yeah, I keep the to... toilets real clean. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your little janitor bucket. That's and right. Everything. But we were talking about how you come across this truck and how it actually come into the shop here to have a, a, a drivability issue fixed, and you wind up buying it from the guy. Kind of, kind of give me well, and our watchers. It was up. one of them deals where the truck came in for a simple brake job. We did the brakes on it. I mentioned to the customer that if he ever decided to get rid of it, I wanted it. Uh, it was exactly what I drove on the ranch out there. And it, it's clean, uh, high mileage truck, honestly. But if you look at the engine on this thing, there's not a tooling mark on anything. I mean, it's never been worked on, period. And, and it's still, it's, you said it has what, 300, 349 on it right now. So 350,000 miles and it's still chugging right along original injectors original turbo i mean literally none of the big major hard parts that we repair on these trucks regularly have been repaired i attribute it because it stays on the road it does not sit yep so he wound up coming back and, and basically giving you the price that here's my sell it price and you yeah. bought it how long have you had the truck i've had the truck going on three years now he took it to another shop to get a straight axle conversion done on it and they put a rear brake rotor on it not knowing that they put a rear brake rotor on it. I don't know how you do that as a shop exactly, but it, <laughs> it had a horrible bounce to the front end and it was completely undrivable. And uh, after a year of taking it back and forth, trying to get the shop to figure out what they'd done wrong, he gave up and pretty much just gave it to me. Uh, the day that I paid him the money for the truck, we had it fixed in five minutes, so. <laughs> and, and you had pretty much held on it to it since and you've done, you've done your, fair share of things to it to kind of make it your own truck yeah so the biggest thing i want to do i've got a thousand horsepower cummins i've got a souped up 6.0 i've got a modified 6.7 power stroke this truck is a five-speed manual it's never going to be fast as factory components fail i'll upgrade as of right now performance wise it's bone stock everything i've done is to look uh, make it look better lighting you know make it better to drive at night and uh We'll, we'll kind of go into depth on those in, yeah. our, in our two part series that we're going to do on your truck, you know, all of your modifications to it. But, you know, it's. You have the same passion for them that we do. Oh, yeah. And, and 
it shows here, you know, at, at all the different trucks that y'all work on, but, uh, you know, getting these in and actually fixing them up, y'all got uh, a bullnose inside that's got a 6-7 power stroke yep. in it, and, you know, it's done all up. It's kind of got a similar backstory to, you know, the guy that owns Leadfoot. He, you know, his dad had it from new, I'm pretty sure, yep. what you told me. So, uh, we'll, we'll do a video on that for y'all, too, while we're here. But, uh, as always, man, we, we yep. really appreciate you coming and doing this Absolutely. video with us. and, and uh, Spending the time out of your busy day because yeah. hey, this is what we're passionate about. Exactly. So, guys, thanks for watching. As always, if you like our videos, don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you have anything you'd like to see us do or any products you would like to have reviewed, drop a comment in the comment section Perfect. or email us at info at cpaddict.com.